Hello everyone and welcome to Web 3.0 video on IntelliPath. Do you know friends that the third generation of web technologies is known as Web 3.0. The world wide web commonly referred to as the web serves as the basic building of the block of internet offered by the website and the application services. Now before we head on to learn more about Web 3.0, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So we are gonna start with what is Web 3.0 technology. Then we are gonna discuss about Web 2.0. Moving ahead, we are gonna discuss the features of Web 3.0. Then we are gonna discuss the differences between Web 2.0 and Web 3.0. Moving ahead, we are gonna learn about layers of Web 3.0. Then we are gonna discuss about advantages and disadvantages of Web 3.0. And at the end, we are gonna conclude our session with discussing the future of Web 3.0 technologies. So let's start with what is Web 3.0. Web 3.0 is a term that you may have heard a lot recently. It simply refers to the next version of the internet, which encourages decentralized protocols and seeks to lessen reliance on huge digital giants such as YouTube, Netflix and Amazon. But what it is and why is everyone talking about? It makes sense to comprehend Web 3 by first understanding what came before it? Web 1, the initial version of internet, debuted in the late 1990s and consisted of a collection of links and home pages. Websites were not very engaging apart from reading and publishing basic stuff from others to read, you couldn't do much. Then came Web 2. Some refer to this as a read or write internet, referring to a computer code that allows you to open and edit files rather than just view them. This version of the internet allowed people to generate their own material and publish it on blogs like Tumblr, internet forums and marketplaces like Craigslist. Later with the rise of social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, content sharing reached a new heights. And after a while, general public became aware of how tech companies were harvesting their personal data using it to develop personalized advertisements and marketing efforts. Facebook in particular has been scrutinized numerous times for violating the data privacy regulations and was fined $5 billion in 2019, the highest penalty ever imposed by the Federal Trade Commission. Although Web2 has provided the world with incredible free services, many individuals have become dissatisfied of the new world gardens that these massive tech companies have constructed and want more control over their data and content. There is where Web3 enters the picture. Web3 can be thought of internet's read, write and own phase. Users can engage in the governance and management of the protocols directly rather than simply using free tech platforms in exchange for our data. This means that individuals rather than just customers or things can become participants or shareholders. I hope so, you would have got some idea regarding what is Web 3.0. But what can you do with Web 3? Web 3 enables the emergence of cooperative governance, models for formerly centralized products, a meme, a piece of art, a personal social media activity or tickets to any conferences or events. The gaming business is an excellent illustration of this paradigm shift. Gamers are constantly complaining about the problems that developers leave in their favorite video game and how the latest patch has thrown off the balance of their favorite weapon. Web3 allows players to invest in the game and vote on how it should be run. Web3 is used by the large Web2 firms such as Meta and Ubisoft to create virtual worlds. Non-fungible tokens or NFTs will also play a significant part in altering the game business by enabling players to become the immutable owners of the stuff they accumulate. I hope so you would have got idea. Now let's see this graph and try to understand how web has evolved over the years. So as you can see in the 1980s and the 1990s we had the PC era. Then between 1990 and 2000 came the web 1.0 where we got introduced to networking, multimedia. Then came web 2.0 which was from 2000 to 2010 
where certain technologies like broadband, mobile computing, you know, real evolution, cloud computing, virtualization came into the picture. Then came the web 3.0 where the semantic technologies are playing the wider role. And it is expected that between 2020 to 2030, web 4.0 will also take its place. I hope so. You have got a clear idea on what you can do on web 3.0. Now let's discuss a bit about web 2.0. Web 2.0 depicts the current state of the internet which contains more user generated content and usability for end users rather than web 1.0. Web 2.0 in general refers to the 21st century internet application that altered the digital era in the aftermath of the dot com bubble. So what is exactly the dot com bubble? Basically, during the late 1990s, a bull market investments in internet-based enterprises spurred a rapid rise in US technology stock equity valuation, resulting in the dot-com bubble. So after the aftermath of the dot-com bubble, we can see there was an advent rise of Web 2.0. Basically, Web 2.0 does not refer to any specific internet technological advancements. It simply refers to a transformation and how people utilize the internet in the 21st century. There is a greater level of information, sharing and connection among people in the new age. This new version allows consumers to actively participate in the experience rather than simply watching and absorbing the information. That was a bit about Web 2.0 and the dot com bubble. Now let's proceed to understand the features of Web 3.0. The first and the most important feature is decentralized administration. Decentralization is at the heart of Web 3.0. With the goal of decentralizing content control, Web 3.0 eliminates the intermediary trader by granting end users complete ownership of data. Websites and applications are broadly disseminated across hundreds and millions of nodes situated on the various devices via peer-to-peer -peer network. In other words, users are no longer controlled by major names like Facebook and Google. The next feature is the ubiquity. Internet content and services can be accessible from any device and at any time, rather than only PCs and smartphones. Web 2.0 is already pervasive in many ways, but the proliferation of IoT devices will push it to the new heights. The next is 3D graphics. Web 3.0 is expected to incorporate 3D visual and AR VR technology to provide consumers with a realistic browsing experience. Immersive three dimensional images have potential to blur the barriers between the physical and the virtual worlds, allowing numerous industries such as gaming, fashion, health, real estate, and others to offer a much more involved user experience. The next is Machine Learning and Artificial Intelligence Machines will process information in the Web 3.0. In the Web 3.0 era, using semantic web and natural language processing techniques. Furthermore, with the help of machine learning, computers may constantly improve their algorithms and grow more precise. Eventually, they are thought to perform language-related jobs in much of the same way that the humans do. I hope so. You would have got clear with the features of Web 3.0. Now let's proceed further and let's understand the difference between Web 2.0 and Web 3.0. So there are certain criteria and we are going to differentiate Web 2.0 and Web 3.0 on the basis of the same. Now first let's look at the definition. It says that Web 2.0 is a second generation of internet services focused on interaction. Where on the other hand, Web 3.0 is the third generation of internet focused on decentralization and semantic learning. Next is the focus. The focus of Web 2.0 is primarily on the community development. Whereas the focus of Web 3.0 is on empowering the individual users. If I talk about the technologies, Web 2.0 uses Ajax, JavaScript, HTML5 and CSS3. Whereas Web 3.0 uses artificial intelligence, machine learning and decentralized protocols. The next is 
the types of application. In web 2.0, you are going to get the web application. Whereas in web 3.0, you are going to get the smart applications based on AI and ML. Now, if I discuss the state of data, web 2.0 is the network that owns the data. Whereas web 3.0 is the entities having ownership over the data and its sharing and the use. And finally, the last criteria is the features. Web 2.0 has features like improved interaction, introduction to web applications, whereas Web 3.0 has the features something like smart, web-based application and functionalities. And the better blend of web technologies and the knowledge representation is provided by Web 3.0. These were the differences between Web 2.0 and Web 3.0. I hope so, it is clear to you. Now let's proceed further and discuss about layers of Web 3.0. The first one is Edge Computing. If I talk about Web 2.0, it altered already commoditized personal computer technology in the data centers, whereas Web 3.0 moves the data to the center to the edge, which means into the edge computing and into our hands. And it has something features like recentralization of data. Because data is decentralized, users will own their data in the web 3.0. Using decentralized data networks, different data generators can sell or share their data without losing ownership or relying to the intermediaries, which follows the principle and is formed into the edge computing. The next is the artificial intelligence. Algorithms for artificial intelligence and machine learning have improved to the point where they can now make useful and in some cases life-saving predictions and actions. The next is blockchain. Blockchain is a decentralized system that executes transactions through the smart contracts. The semantics of Web 3.0 applications are defined by these smart contracts. As a result, everyone who wants to create a blockchain application must employ the shared state machine. Now, let's discuss the advantages of Web 3.0. The first is ownership of information or data. End users will reclaim entire ownership and control of their data while also benefiting from security of encryption. The data might then be shared based on the permission or need or in case by case basis. Currently, huge corporations such as Facebook and Amazon have a plethora of servers keeping personal information such as income, interest, dietary preferences, credit cards and so on. These data are not collected solely to improve their services, rather they are sold to the advertisers and marketers who spend billions of dollars each year. Next is access to information. One of the major advantages of Web 3.0 is the ability to access data from anywhere, which is primarily driven by the widespread use of smartphone and the cloud applications. The objective is to provide users with as much as information as possible from anywhere in the world. The technology intends to broaden the concept by allowing gadgets to collect user data and allowing smartphones to access the data on your PC. The next is elimination of central point of control. Blockchains such as Ethereum provide a secure environment where data is entirely encrypted and rules are unbreakable. As a result, the intermediaries are removed from the equation. Apple and Google will no longer have access to the consumer data. No government or entity will be able to kill services or websites and no individual will be able to control the identities of others. The next is permissionless blockchain. Anyone can create a blockchain and address and engage with the network. It is impossible to overestimate the power of accessing permissionless blockchain. The users will not be prohibited based on their wealth, location, orientation, gender or a variety of other demographic and sociological criteria. Digital assets and wealth can be transferred efficiently, swiftly across borders and anywhere in the world. And finally, the last advantage is its uninterrupted service. Account suspension and denial of distributed services are drastically decreased. Because there is no single point of failure, service impact will be very minimal.
to provide redundancy the data will be kept on distributed nodes and several backups will avoid seizure or server failure i hope so it is clear with you the advantages of web 3.0 now we will discuss the disadvantages of web 3.0 the first one is that web 3.0 will be inaccessible to the less advanced devices then web 1.0 sites will appear significantly more out of date it might be also extremely difficult for the newbies to comprehend what what is web 3.0 many laws had to be altered in order to ensure security and ownership of everything involved in web 3.0 the next disadvantage is that there is a need to produce environmental friendly technology because present technology has a much higher carbon footprint than its predecessor the next is we can also think that technology isn't quite ready for it yet and finally it is simple to obtain a user public or private information so these can be considered few limitation or setbacks of web 3.0 and finally we are going to discuss now what is the future of web 3.0 almost every industry from retail and e-commerce to media and entertainment healthcare technology and energy is projected to use web 3.0 blockchain technology in their operation over the next decade web 3.0 is primarily reliant on blockchain yet it is not entirely reliant on cryptocurrencies it is only because cryptocurrencies is that blockchain technology that has advanced numerous research studies predict that web 3.0 technology will soon reach a tipping point and sectors ranging from aeroplane maintenance to food safety will tokenize their apps web 3 blockchain in our opinion will radically revolutionize the existing traditional operations of several sectors according to market research future the web 3.0 blockchain technology sector will be worth more than 6 trillion by 2023 from 2023 to 2020 web 3.0 will increase at cagr of 44.6% as a result it will be one of the most fastest growing industries during the next decade that was all for today's session i hope so you enjoyed our video on web 3.0 just a quick info guys intellipad provides blockchain certification training mentored by industry experts the course link of which is given in the description below